Alright guys, back with another uh, graphing calculator video featuring my Casio FX CG50. Uh, today I'm just going to be giving a demonstration of uh, Nessism or NESism, depending on how you want to pronounce it. It is the new NES emulator for the graphic calculator. It's not like super new, it's several months old, but uh, I was waiting until sound, they implemented sound as a option and it, it, it previously didn't have sound support but it does now but it's just a basic emulator uh, for the NES for the graphing calculator or Casio's I think for the 1020 yeah the CG10 CG20 and the CG50 it runs the best on the CG50 uh, first we go to options and you can see we have all these options there's this uh, you have frame skip you have your speed uh, Get your controls. You can remap all the buttons and then the turbo button speed. Again, then the screen, you can change the aspect ratio. And then there's the sound. And uh, it's actually off by default when you get this. You have to turn it on to use it. Uh, I'm not sure what extra effects does. I'm, I'm guessing it's supposed to improve the quality of the sound, but I don't know. The sound is really bad on these calculators because they're not really made for that, but it, they work well enough. I'll demonstrate the sound in a minute. You have to have some stuff to do that. Uh, you can see I have a lot of ROMs in here. Uh, we're just gonna let's pick Super Mario because everyone knows what that is. Uh, so yeah, yeah. This is the start button. Yeah, so it's just Mario. You can see. kind of you know so you could play all these in your class or whatever especially if like you know there's the teachers that always want your phones up in those pockets or whatever but you could have this you know so we're gonna get to the the sound now if you want to exit you just hit you can just hit menu or you can hit exit uh, for sound what you need is uh, you look at the hole on the top of this and you'll notice it's smaller than a normal hole like in something else with a jack here we'll take the speaker for example that's the aux hole for this speaker and this is the aux hole for this calculator it's a that's a three and a half millimeter and this is a two and a half millimeter uh, jack input so what you have to do is you have to get one of these adapters I have a lot of these this is my focus you damn camera oh this is mine this is the main one I use because it's the thickest Uh, that's a two and a half end, and that's a three and a half. So it's you need a two and a half male to three and a half female uh, audio adapter. I actually had to don't actually get this specific one. I'm not gonna have any links or anything. You guys are gonna have to find it on your own. But this specific one, I had to actually chip some of the plastic away with a knife because it wouldn't fit in this top. But you just you stick it in there. Take this case off. Actually, stick that in there, and then you can put your your cord for your speakers or whatever inside of that. I actually have two different things. I have this cheap speaker. I got it for like eight or nine dollars off a of B-Bay. Uh, you just put some batteries in it and it's got a switch. So we'll turn that on. And then I plug that in the top of this and it looks pretty stupid. But I mean, in general, I'll probably just... Uh, if I'm playing this, I'll probably not have earbuds or whatever in. There is control for the volume. I'll get to that in a minute. So we'll just reload. We'll re we'll load Mega Man 2 because it has actual audio. As you can see, it's pretty terrible. I'm just going to skip to the main menu. So as you can see, that sounds pretty bad. Uh, maybe we could try going to sound and then ch turning this off. Maybe that would improve the quality somehow. No, not really. Uh, the volume controls by default are plus and minus. You can't actually mute it. This is as low as it goes. You might not be able to hear that on camera, but.
and that's the highest it goes. But considering it's from a, gra a graphing calculator, it's uh, not that hard to... I mean, it, it's pretty good, I think, for a calculator. Uh, go to about... Uh, if you go to here, this website, github.com slash ts uh, williamson slash nesism, that is where you can get this. I have another video on how to put this stuff on your calculator. Just go to that website and you can put this on here and then you can go to some, you can find your ROMs however you want and put them into the root of your calculator and put them on there that way. That works too. Um, I'm going to do this one more time, the sound with an actual speaker. This isn't anything too fancy, but... Um, we'll load Castlevania this time. So for pump, some people, this might be kind of annoying the sound, but I don't know, I enjoy it. No, I wasn't paying attention just then. Alright, there's Castlevania. Uh, we'll load up. Mike Tyson's punch up. I'm seeing if I remember the strategy to one hit this guy, because I don't, it's been a while. No, I don't remember it. So yeah, that's Mike Tyson's punch out. Also have uh, Tetris. Those actually do have different colors, it's just...
So that's Tetris? No, uh, that's, that's NESism. It's about all there is to it. You know, options, loading, ROMs. You guys should be able to figure out how to put this stuff on here, get this on here with my other video. Uh, yeah. So, I plan on getting some more videos done soon. Uh, I recently got a rare version of the Atari 2600. It's actually called the Atari 2800 in Japan. This version was, but in the U.S. it was released as the, the Sears Video Arcade 2. I'll probably be making a video on this soon. I got lots of games for it now. I also recently got a Sega Genesis, and I might go over some of the games I have for it as well. Uh, yeah. So, uh, I just started a gaming collection recently. Got a, I got a shelf over. over. I'll, I'll show it in another video someday. I got a shelf with a bunch of games on it. PS2, PS1, Genesis, and Atari is mainly what I collect for now. Uh... I do have Wii games, but I do not collect for it. I use it primarily for an emulator setup. I use it primarily as an emulator. I have lots of emulators on my Wii. Uh, this is kind of a hot mess right now, but I'll be showing some Atari stuff pretty soon. So stay tuned, guys. I'll probably upload. Uh, I'm going to try maybe one, once a week. Probably upload more than that, but it'll probably end up being like once a week. So yeah. See you next time. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Hope you enjoyed the video. And, uh, yeah, get in NASism for another gaming choice. Uh, in comparison to uh, Prisoop, actually. Prisoop is the Game Boy one that I showed on a past video. This is Prisoop. Uh, I have Pokemon Yellow and some other stuff on here. Now, the thing with uh, Prisoop is... Uh, Game Boy ROMs are actually have, most of them have like a higher, they have a higher memory than Game Boy, or Game Boy games have a higher memory than NES games do, so you can fit a lot more NES ROMs on here. And in my opinion, the NES emulator runs a lot smoother than the Game Boy. So, if you're looking for the, just one of these, I'd say the best emulator option is the NES one. Because you can fit the most ROMs on there, and it runs the smoothest, and I think it has the best sound. It's not, of course, neither of them are really that great, but I think it has the best sound quality out of the two. So, yeah. Hope you enjoyed. See you later.